ஓம் நமோ பகவதே வாசுதேவாயா ஓம் நமோ பகவதே வாசுதேவாயா ஓம் நமோ பகவதே வாசுதேவாயா உமாஜானதி மிரந்தஞ்சனாசலாக்கூன் மீறிதம் ஏன தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீ குரவே நமஹ ஸ்ரீ சைத்தன மனோபீஸ்தம் ஸ்தாபிதம் ஏன பூத்தலே ஸ்வயம் ரூபாஹ்கதாமஹ்யம் தராதி ஸ்வாபராந்திகம் வந்தேஹம் ஸ்ரீ குரு ஸ்ரீ யுதபதகமலம் ஸ்ரீ குருன் வைஷ்ணவம் ஸ்ரீரூபம் சாகிருஜாத்தம் சாகனரகுநாத்தன்விதம் தம் சஜீவம் சர்வைத்தம் சவரூதம் பரிஜன சஹிதம் கிருஷ்ண சைத்தன்ய தேவம் ஸ்ரீராதா கிருஷ்ண பாதான் சாகனலிதா ஸ்ரீ விசாகன்விதம் ஹே கிருஷ்ண கருணா சிந்தோ தீனபந்தோ ஜகத்பதே கோபேஷ கோபிகா காந்தாராதகாந்த நமோஸ்துதே தப்த கஞ்சன கௌரங்கி ராதே விருந்தவனேஸ்வரி விசாபானுசுதே தேவி பிரணமாமி ஹரி பிரியே மஞ்சாகல்பத்தருப்பிருபாசிந்துக்கேவச்ச பதிதானம் பாவனேப்பியோ வைஷ்ணவேப்பியோ நமோ நமஹ நம ஓம் விஷ்ணு பதாய கிருஷ்ணா பிரிஸ்தாய பூத்தலே ஸ்ரீமதே பக்தி வேதாந்த சுவாமி நிதினாமினே நமஸ்தே சரஸ்வதே தேவே கௌரவாணி பிரச்சாரிணே நிர்விசேஷ சுண்யவாரி பாஷத்தரிஷதாரிணே ஜெய ஸ்ரீகிருஷ்ண சைத்தன்ய பிரபு நித்தியானந்த ஸ்ரீ அத்வைதாதர ஸ்ரீவாசாரி கௌரபக்த வந்த ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரே 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 ராம ஹரே ராம 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 ஹரே ஹரே ஹரி போ ஓகே ஸோ டுடே வி ரீட் த சாப்டர் ஃபோர்டீன் ப்ரேயர்ஸ் ஆஃபர்ட் பை லோட் பிரம்ம டு லோட் கிருஷ்ண அண்ட் த புக் இஸ் கிருஷ்ண புக் ஹரி போ Okay, Hare Krishna. Brahma said, My dear Lord, you are the only worshipable Supreme Lord, personality of Godhead. Therefore, I am offering my humble obeisances and prayer just to you, just to please you. Your bodily features are of the color of clouds filled with water. You are glittering with a silver, silver electric aura emanating from your yellow garments. Let me offer my respect for repeated obeisances unto the son of Maharaj Nanda, who is standing before me with conch shell earrings and peacock feather on his head his face is beautiful he's wear, wear, he's wearing a helmet garlanded by forest flowers and he stands with a morsel of food in his hand he is decorated with cane and bug bugle and he carries buffalo horn and flute he stands before me with small lotus feet my dear lord People may say that I am the master of all Vedic knowledge and I am supposed to be the creator of this universe but it has been proved now that I cannot understand your personality even though you are present before me just like a child you are playing with your boyfriends calves and cows which might imply that you do not even have sufficient education you are appearing just like a village boy carrying your food in your hand and searching for your calves and yet there is so, so much difference between your body and mine that i cannot estimate the potency of your body as i have as i have already stated in the brahma samhita your body is not material in the brahma samhita it is stated that the body of the lord is all spiritual there is no difference between the lord's body and his self each limb of his body can perform the actions of all the others the lord can see with his hands he can hear with his eyes he can accept offerings with his legs and he he can create with his mouth brahma continued your appearance as a cowherd child is for the benefit of the devotees and although i have committed offenses at your lotus feet by stealing away your boys your cows boys and calves i can understand that you have mercy upon me that is your transcendental quality you are very affectionate toward your devotees In spite of your affection for me I cannot estimate the potency of your bodily activities it is to be understood that when I Lord Brahma the supreme personality of this universe cannot estimate the childlike body of the supreme personality of Godhead then what to speak of others and if I cannot estimate the spiritual potency of your childlike body then what can I un- understand about your transcendental pastimes therefore as it is said in the Bhagavad Gita anyone who can understand a little of the transcendental pastimes appearance and disappearance of the lord becomes immediately eligible to enter into the kingdom of god after greeting this material the material body the statement 
This statement is also confirmed in the Vedas, and it is stated simply, by understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can overcome the chain of repeated birth and death. I therefore recommend that people should not try to understand you by their speculative knowledge. The best process of understanding you is to submissively give up the speculative process and try to hear about you, either from yourself, as you have given a statement in the Bhagavad Gita and many similar Vedic literature, or from a realized devotee who has taken shelter at your lotus feet. One has to hear from a devotee without speculation. One does not even need to change his worldly position. He simply has to hear your message. Although you are not understandable by the material senses, simply by hearing about you, one can gradually conquer the science of misunderstanding. By your own grace only, you become revealed to a devotee. You are unconquerable by any other means. Speculative knowledge without any trace of devotional service is simply a useless waste of time in the search for you. Devotional service is so important that even a little attempt can raise one to the highest perfectional platform. One should not therefore neglect this auspicious process of devotional service and take to the speculative method. By the speculative method, one may gain partial knowledge of your cosmic manifestation, but it is not possible to understand you, the origin of everything. The attempt of persons who are interested only in speculative knowledge is simply wasted labor, like the labor of a person who attempts to gain something by beating the empty husk of a rice paddy. A little quantity of paddy of paddy can be husked by the grinding wheel and one can gain some grains of rice but if the skin of the paddy is already beaten by the grinding wheel there is no further gain in beating the husk it is simply useless labor my dear lord there are many instances in the history of human society where a person after failing to achieve the transcendental platform engaged himself in devotional service with his body mind and words and thus attain the highest perfectional state of entering your abode. The process of understanding you by speculation or mystic meditation are all useless without devotional service. One should therefore engage himself in your devotional service, even in his worldly activities, and one should always keep himself near you, near you by the process of hearing and chanting your transcendental glories. Simply by being attached to hearing and chanting your glories, one can attain the highest perfectional stage and enter into your kingdom. If a person, therefore, always keeps in touch with you by hearing and chanting your glories and offers the result of his work for your, for your satisfaction only, he very easily and happily attains entrance into the supreme abode. You are re realizable by persons who have cleansed their heart of all contamination. This cleansing of the heart is made possible by chanting and hearing the glories of your Lordship. The Lord is all-pervading, and it is stated by the Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, everything is sustained by me, but at the same time I am not in everything. Since the Lord is all-pervading, there is nothing existing without his knowledge. The all-pervasive nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can never be within the limited knowledge of a living entity. Therefore, a person who has attained steadiness of the mind by fixing the mind on the lotus feet of the Lord, is able to understand the Supreme Lord to some extent. It is the business of the mind to wander over various subject matter for sense gratification. Therefore, only a person who engages the senses always in the service of the Lord can control the mind and be fixed in the lotus feet of the Lord. This concentration of the mind upon the lotus feet of the Lord is called samadhi. Until one reaches the stage of samadhi or trance, he cannot understand the nature of the Supreme Person of Godhead. There may be some philosophers or scientists who can study the cosmic nature from atom to atom. They may be so advanced that they can count the atomic composition of the cosmic atmosphere for or all the planets and stars in the sky, or even the shining molecular parts of the sun or other stars and luminaries in the sky but it is not possible to count the qualities of the Supreme Person of God. Hare Krishna. Anyone can continue from there. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Manu Prabhu Danda Tranam Jaisa Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Danda Tranam Jaisa Prabhupada. As described in the beginning of the Vedanta Sutra, the Supreme Person uh, is the origin of all qualities. He's generally called uh, Nigru, Nir, Nirguna, uh, 
Near guna means without qualities. Guna means quality, and near means without. But impersonalists interpret this word as near guna as having no quality, because they are unable to estimate the qualities of the Lord in transcendental uh, realization. They conclude that the supreme uh, that the supreme Lord has no qualities, but this is actually not the position. The real position is that he is the origin of all uh, original. Uh, he is the original source of all qualities. All qualities are emanating uh, constantly from him. How, therefore, can an, a limited person count the quality um, qualities of the Lord? One may estimate the qualities of the Lord for one moment, but the next moment the qualities are increased. So it is not possible to make an estimation of the transcendental qualities of the Lord. He is therefore called Nirguna. His qualities cannot be estimated. One should not uselessly labor in material speculation to estimate the Lord's qualities. There is no need of adopting speculative method or exercising the body to attain mystic yoga perfection. One should simply understand that the that the distress and happiness of the body are predestined. There is no need to try to avoid the distress of the of this bodily existence or to attempt to achieve happiness in different types of ex exercises. The best course is to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of God with, the, with body, mind, and words and always be engaged in His service. Uh, this transcendental labor uh, is fruitful, but other attempts in, uh, to understand the absolute truth are never successful. Therefore, an intelligent man does not try to understand the supreme person, absolute truth by speculative or mystic power. Rather, he engages in devotional service and depends on the supreme personality of Godhead. He knows that what uh, that whatever may happen <laughs> to the body is due to the past <laughs> excuse me, fruit of activities. If, if one uh, lives if one lives a simple life in devotional service, then automatically he can inherit the transcendental boat of the Lord. Actually, every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and the Son of uh, and the Son of Godhead. Each has the the natural right to inherit and share the transcendental pleasures of the Lord. But do um but due to the contact of mater uh, of matter. Conditioned living entities have been um, practically uh, disinherited. If one adopted, uh, adopts a simple method of engaging himself in devotional service, automatically he becomes eligible to become to become freed from the material contamination and, el and elevated to the transcendental position of associating with the Supreme Lord. Lord Brahma presents himself to to Lord Krishna as the most um, presumptuous living entity, uh, living creatures, because he wanted to examine uh, the wonder of his personal power. He stole the boys and calves of the Lord in order to see how the Lord will recover them. After his maneuver, Lord Brahma admitted that his attempt was most presumptuous, for he was attempting to test uh, his energy before the person of the original energy. Uh, coming to his senses, Lord Brahma saw that although he was a very powerful living entity in the estimation of all living entities within the material world, um, in comparison to the power, uh, power and energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, his power was nothing. Scientists of the material world have discovered wonders such as the atomic weapons, weapons and and when tested in a city or a, or insignificant place on the planet, such powerful weapons create so so called havoc. But if the atomic we weapons are tested on the sun, this is <laughs> what is their significance? <laughs> they they are so insignificant there. Similarly, Brahma stealing the calves and the boys from Sri Krishna may be a wonderful display of mystic power. But when Krishna exhibited his expensive power in so many calves and cowboy, uh, and calves and boys, 
uh, and maintain them without effort, Brahma could understand that his own power was insignificant. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Brahma addressed Lord Krishna as a tutor because the Lord is never forgetful of a little service rendered by his devotee. He is so kind and affectionate towards his devotee that the little service by them is accepted by him as a great deal. Brahma has certainly rendered much service to the Lord. As the Supreme Personality in charge of this particular universe, he is without a doubt a faithful servant of Krishna. Therefore, he could, uh, he could appease Krishna. He is asked that the Lord understand him as a subordinate servant whose little mistake and impudence might be ex excused. He admitted that he was puffed up by his powerful position as Lord Brahma because he is the qualitative uh, qualitative incarnation of the mode of passion within this material world. This was natural for him, and therefore he committed the mistake. But after all, Lord Krishna would kindly take compassion upon his subordinate and excuse him for his gross mistake. Lord Brahma realized his actual position. He is certainly the supreme teacher of this universe, in charge of the production of material nature. Uh, consisting of complete material elements, false ego, sky, air, fire, water, and earth. Such a universe may be gigantic, but it can be measured just as we measure our body as seven cubits. Generally, everyone's personal bodily measurement is calculated to be seven, uh, sorry, to be seven cubits of his hand. This particular universe may appear as a very gigantic body, but it is nothing but the measurement of seven cubits of for Lord Brahma. Aside from this universe, there are unlimited other universes which are outside the jurisdiction of this particular Lord Brahma, just as innumerable atomic infin infinitesimal fragments pass through the holes of a screened window, so millions and trillions of universes in their seedling form are coming out from the bodily pores of Mahavishnu and that Mahavishnu is but a part of the plenary expression of Krishna. Under these circumstances, although Lord Brahma is the supreme creature within this universe, what is his importance in the presence of Lord Krishna? Lord Brahma therefore compared himself to a little child within the womb of his mother. If the child within the womb plays with his hands and legs, and while playing touches the body of the mother, is the mother offended with the child? Of course she isn't. Similarly, Lord Brahma may be a very great personality, and yet not only Brahma, but everything that be is existing within the womb, within the womb of the supreme personality of Godhead. The Lord's energy is all pervading. There is no place in the creation where it is not acting. Everything is existing within the energy of the Lord. So the Brahma of this universe or the Brahmas of the many other millions and trillions of universes are existing within the energy of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord is considered to be the mother, and everything existing within the womb of the mother is considered, is considered to be the child. And the good mother is never offended with the child, even if he touches the body of the mother by kicking his legs. Lord Brahma then admitted that his birth uh, was from the lotus flower which blossomed from the navel of Narayana after the dissolution of the three worlds or three planetary systems known as Bhurloka, Bhuvarloka, and Svarloka. The universe is divided into three divisions, namely Svarga, Marti, and Paatala. These three planetary systems are merged into water at the time of dissolution. At that time, Narayana, the planetary portions of Krishna, lies down on the water, and gradually a lotus steam grows from his navel, and from that lotus flower Brahma is born. It is naturally concluded that the mother of, <clears throat> that the mother of Brahma is Narayan, because the Lord is the resting place of all the living entities after the dissolution of this universe, he is called Narayan. The word Nara means the aggregate total of all living entities, and Ayana means the resting place. The form of Garbhagadashai Vishnu is called Narayana because he rests himself on that water. In addition, he is the resting place of all living creatures. Besides that, Narayan is also present in everyone's heart, as it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. In that sense, also, he is Narayana, 
as Aina means the source of knowledge as well as the resting place. It is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that remembrance of the living entity is due to the presence of the super soul within the heart. After changing the body, a living creature forgets everything of his past life, past life. But because Narayana, the super soul, is present within the heart, within the within his heart, he is reminded by him to act according to his past desire. Lord Brahma wanted to prove that Krishna is the original Narayana, that he is the source of Narayana, and that Narayana is not an exhibition of the external energy, Maya, but is an expansion of spiritual energy. The activities of the external energy on Maya are exhibited after the creation of this cosmic world, and the original spiritual energy of Narayana was acting before the creation. So the, so the expansions of Narayana from Krishna to Garbhadagashaya Vishnu, from Garbhadagashaya Vishnu to Kshiradagashaya Vishnu, and from Kshiradagashaya Vishnu to everyone's heart, are manifestation of his spiritual energy. They are not conducted by the material energy. Therefore, they are not temporary. Anything conducted by the material energy is temporary, but everything executed by the spiritual energy is eternal. Rebo. Hare Krishna. Lord Brahma reconfirmed his statement, establishing Krishna as the original Narayana. He said that the gigantic universal body is still resting on the water known as Karbodaka. He spoke as follows. This gigantic body of the universe is another manifestation of your energy. On account of his resting on the water, this universal form is also Narayana. And we are all within the womb of this Narayana form. I see your different Narayana forms everywhere. I can see you on the water. I can feel you within my heart and I can also see you before me now. You are the original Narayana. My dear Lord, in this incarnation you have proved that you are the supreme controller of Maya. You remain within the cosmic manifestation and yet the whole creation is within you. This fact has already been proved by you when you exhibited the whole universal creation within your mouth before your mother Yashoda. By your inconceivable potency of yoga maya, you can make such things effective without the external help. My dear Lord Krishna, the whole cosmic manifestation that we are visualizing at the present is all within your body. Yet I am seeing you outside and you are also seeing me outside. How can such things happen without being influenced by your inconceivable energy? Lord Brahma stressed herein that without accepting the inconceivable energy of the Supreme Person of Godhead, one cannot explain things as they are. He continued, My dear Lord, leaving aside all other things and just considering today's happenings, what I have seen, are they not all due to your inconceivable energies? First of all, I saw you alone. Thereafter, you expanded yourself as your friends, the calves, and all the existence of Rindavan. Then I saw you and all the boys as four-handed Vishnus, and they were being worshipped by all elements and all demigods, including myself. Then, again, they all became cowherd boys, and you remained alone as you were before. Does this not mean that you are the Supreme Lord Narayana, the origin of everything, and from you everything emanates, and again everything enters unto you, and you remain the same as before? Persons who are unaware of your inconceivable energy cannot understand that you alone expand yourself as the creator Brahma, maintainer Vishnu and annihilator Shiva. Persons who are not in awareness of things as they are contemplated that I, Brahma, am the creator. Vishnu is the maintainer and Lord Shiva is the annihilator. Actually, you are alone everything, creator, maintainer and annihilator. Similarly, you expand yourself in different incarnations. Among the demigods, you incarnate as Vamana Deva. Among the great sages, you incarnate as Parasuram. Among the human beings, you appear as yourself, as Lord Krishna or Lord Rama. Among the animals, you appear as the boar incarnation. And among the aquatics, you appear as the incarnation of fish. And yet you have no appearance. You are always eternal. Your appearance and disappearance are made possible by your inconceivable energy just to give protection to the faithful devotees and to annihilate the demons. O my Lord, O all-pervading Supreme Person of God, O Super Soul, 
controller of all mystic powers. No one can appreciate your transcendental pastimes as they are exhibited within this, these three worlds. No one can estimate how you have expanded your yoga maya and your incarnation and how you act by your transcendental energy. My dear Lord, this whole cosmic manifestation is just like a flashing dream and its temporary existence simply disturbs the mind. As a result, we are all full of anxiety in this existence. To live within this material world means simply to suffer and to be full of all miseries. And yet this temporary existence of the material world appears to be pleasing and dear on account of its having evolved from your body, which is eternal and full of bliss and knowledge. My conclusion is, therefore, that you are the supreme soul, absolute truth, and the supreme original person. And although you have expanded yourself in so many Vishnu forms or in living entities and energies by your inconceivable transcendental potencies, you are the supreme one without a second. You are the supreme super soul. The innumerable living entities are simply like sparks of the original fire. Your lordship, the conception of the super soul as impersonal is wrongly accepted because I see that you are the original person. A person with a poor fund of knowledge may think that because you are the son of Maharaj Nanda, you are not the original person, that you are born just like a human being. They are mistaken. You are the actual original person. That is my conclusion. In spite of you being the son of Nanda, you are the original person and there is no doubt about it. You are the absolute truth and you are not of this material darkness. You are the source of the original Brahma Jyoti as well as the material luminaries. Your transcendental effulgence is identical with Brahma Jyoti. As it is described in the Brahma Samhita, the Brahma Jyoti is nothing but your personal bodily effulgence. There are many Vishnu incarnations and incarnations of your different qualities, but all those incarnations are not on the same level. You are the original lamp. Other incarnations may possess the same candle power as the original lamp, but the original lamp is the beginning of all lights. And because you are not one of the creations of this material world, even after the annihilation of this world, your existence as you are will continue. Because you are the original person, you are therefore described in the Gop Gopala Tapani, the Vedic Upanishad, as well as in the Brahma Samhita as Govindam Adipurusham. Govinda is the original person, the cause of all causes. In the Bhagavad Gita also it is stated that you are the source of the Brahman effulgence. No one should conclude that your body is like an ordinary material body. Your body is akshara, indestructible. The material body is always full of threefold miseries. But your body is Satchidananda Vigraha, full of being, bliss, knowledge and eternality. You are also Niranjana. Because your pastimes at, as the little son of Mother Yashoda or the Lord of the Gopis are never contaminated by the material qualities. And although you exhibited yourself in so many cowherd boys, calves and cows, your, trans your transcendental potency is not reduced. You are always complete, as it is stated, as it is described in the Vedic literature. Even if the complete is taken away from the complete, supreme absolute truth, it yet remains the complete. Supreme Absolute Truth. And although many expansions from the complete are visible, the complete is one without a second. Since all your pastimes are spiritual, there is no possibility of their being contaminated by the material modes of nature. When you place yourself subordinate to, the, to your father and mother, Nanda and Yashoda, you are not reduced in your potency. This is an expression of your loving attitude for your devotees. There is no other competitor of second identity second identity than yourself a person with a poor fund of knowledge concludes that your pastimes and appearance are simply material designations you are transcendental to both to both the science and knowledge as it is confirmed in the gopalatapani you are the original amrita nectar of immortality indestructible as it is confirmed in the vedas amritam sashvatam brahme brahme Brahman is the eternal, the supreme origin of everything, who has no birth or death. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
In the Upanishads, it is stated that the Supreme Brahman is the effulgence as the sun, as the sun and the origin of everything. And anyone who can understand that the original person becomes liberated from the material condition of life. Sorry. Uh, and anyone who can understand that the original person becomes liberated from the material condition life. Anyone who can simply be, um, be attached to you by devotional service can know your actual position, your birth, appearance, disappearance, and activities. As confirmed in, excuse me, Bhagavad Gita, simply by understanding your constitutional position, appearance, appearance and disappearance, one can be, one can, one can be immediately in, elevated to the spiritual kingdom after quitting this present Lord Brahmand uh, Swan evil Sing Krishna uh, with his coward friends and Lord Brahmand uh, decided to play a trick <laughs> that was his last trick <laughs> Oh, I think you're 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 muted or something. Krishna always uh, demanded Mother Yashoda uh, complete attention. Anybody? <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, this is the Arjuna trees. <laughs> Evil. Out of the broken, uh, fallen trees came two personalities shining like blazing fire. So look at these plants. These look nice. Oh wow! The blue ones. I like them. Oh, what's this one? Mm. With tumultuous sounds, they started uh, for Vrindavan. Oh, when they're moving to Vrindavan. <laughs> Evil. Yeah, this is really nice. <laughs> I'm offering my humble obeisances and prayers just to please you. Yes, look at Krishna. He's like, who is this tall man? <laughs> He's like, who this tall man came with? Who? He has forehead. <laughs> and a small tiger uh, is just taking a rest out there. Yes. He's like, oh, Krishna is dead. Oh, this flower is nice also. Oh, wow. I didn't so notice today, that. You have good eyes. Today I found a a bird. Today I found uh, a really interesting bird. Do you know this bird? What, what bird, Prabhu? You no, know this color. This is so nice color. This is my favorite color. Uh, oh, color. I thought you said I found a bird. I was like, oh, yes, what, what kind of bird? <laughs> yes, look, look at this bird. Ah. Uh. It, it looked, it had that kind of color, huh? Yeah, look at his feet. Oh, wow. Mm, I was so. Yeah, today I saw first time this bird. I was like, what is this bird? Looks like a pigeon. Is the feet are really nice. A blue feet bird. Wow. I never is it's it's like the same color. <laughs> if it if anyone told me about a bird with blue feet, I would be like, okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <'Cause they're... laughs> but it's there. <laughs> it's today I saw it first time and I was like, what is this? Because they walk in funny way also, like this. Oh, 
Oh wow. <laughs> He's like doing a model for us. <laughs> yes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was definitely a human in the past life. Yeah, yeah, different. Now he got the same color feet as Krishna had here. Wow. Okay, you have like five Haribo. pages. Five, five pages? Okay. Uh, let's take it down. Anymore. Therefore, to cross over the ocean of material knee signs, an intelligent um, person takes shelter onto your lotus feet and is easily transferred to the spiritual world. There are many so-called meditators who do not know that you are the supreme soul. Uh, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, you are the supreme soul present in everyone's heart. Therefore, there's no necessity of one's meditating on something beyond you. One who is always absorbed in meditation on your original form of Krishna easily crosses over the ocean of material knee sides. But persons who do not know that you are the supreme soul r remain within the material world in spite of their so-called meditation. If by association by of your devotees, a person comes to the knowledge that the, uh, that Lord Krishna is the original super soul, then it is possible for him to cross over the ocean of material ignorance. For, in, for instance, a person becomes transcendental to the mistakes uh, to the mistake of thinking a rope is a snake. As soon as one understands that the rope is not a snake he is liberated from fear it, for one who for one who understand you therefore though your personal teachings as stated in bhagavad gita and through your per, um, pure devotees as stated in shrimad bhagavatam and all vedic uh literatures that you are the ultimate goal of understanding he needs no more uh he needs no more fear this material existence. So-called liberated in, uh, liberation and bondage has no meaning for a person who is already engaged in the devotional service, just as a person who knows a rope is not a snake is unafraid. <laughs> a devotee knows that the material world belongs to you, and he, therefore, engages everything in your transcendental loving service. Thus, there is no bondage for him. For a person who is already situated in the sun planet, there's no question of appearance and disappearance of the sun in the name of day and night. It is said it is also said that you, Krishna, are the are just like the sun, and Maya is like the darkness. When the sun is present, there's no question of darkness. For those who are always in your presence, there's no question of bondage or liberation. They're already liberated. On the other hand, persons who are falsely thinking themselves to be liberated without taking shelter of your lowest feet fall down because of their intelligence, um, because their intelligence is not pure. If one, uh, if one therefore thinks that the supreme soul is something different from your personality and thus searches out the super soul somewhere else in the forest or in the in the caves of the Himalayas, his condition is very lamentable. Your teachings in the Bhagavad Gita are that one should give up all other um, processes of self-realization and simply surrender unto you, for th that is complete, because you are the supreme in everything. Those who are searching after the Brahmin effulgence are also searching after you, and those who are searching after the super soul realization uh, are are also searching after you. You have stated in Bhagavad Gita that you yourself, by your part, uh, partial representation as the super soul, have entered into this material uh, cosmic manifestation. You are present in everyone's heart, and there is no need to search out for the supreme soul uh, anywhere else. If, and if someone does so, he is simply ignorant. Is in is sorry he is simply in ignorance one who is transcendental to such a position understands that you are unlimited you are both within and without your presence is everywhere and instead of searching for the super soul anywhere else 
if a devotee only concentrates his mind on you within, actually one who is liberated from the material concept of life can search for you. Others cannot. This, uh, dissimilarly, yeah, the simile of thinking the rope of, uh, the simile of thinking, of thinking the rope to be a snake. Is acceptable only to those who are still in ignorance to you. Actually, the existence of a snake besides the rope is only within the mind. The existence of Maya similarly is also within the mind. Maya is nothing but ignorance of your personality. When one forgets your personality, that is the conditioned state of Maya. Therefore, one who is fixed upon you both internally and externally is not illusioned. Hare Krishna. Very well. One who has attained a little devotional service can understand your glories. Even one striving for Brahman realization or Paramatma realization cannot understand the different features of your personality unless he treads the devotional path. One may be the spiritual master of many impersonalists, or he may go to the forest or the cave or mountain and meditate as a hermit for many, many years but he cannot understand your glories without being favored by a slight degree of devotional service. Brahman realization or Paramatma realization are also not possible even after one searches for many, many years unless one is touched by the wonderful effect of a devotional service. My dear Lord, I pray that I may be so fortunate that in this life or in another life, wherever I may take my birth, I may be counted as one of your devotees. <clears throat> Wherever I may be, I pray that I may be engaged in your devotional service. I do not even care what form of life I can I get in the future, because I can see that even in the form of cows and calves or cowherd boys, the devotees are so fortunate to be always engaged in your transcendental love and service and association. Therefore, I wish to be... Uh, Therefore, I wish to be one of them instead of such an exalted person as I am now, for I am full of ignorance. The gopis and cows of Vrindavan are so fortunate that they have been able to supply their breast milk to you. Persons who are engaged in performing great, great sacrifices and offering, and offering many valuable goats in the sacrifice cannot attain the perfection of understanding you, but simply by devotional service, these innocent village women and cows are all able to satisfy you with their milk. You have drunk their milk to satisfaction, yet you are never satisfied by those engaged in performing sacrifices. I am simply, I'm simply surprised, therefore, with the fortunate position of Maharaj Nanda, Mother Yashoda, and the cowherd men and gopis, because you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, are existing here as their most intimate, lovable object. My dear Lord, no one... Uh, sorry, my dear Lord, no, no one can actually appreciate the good fortune of this residence of Rindavan. We're all, we're all demigods controlling deities of the various senses of the living entities, and we are proud of enjoying such privileges. But actually, there is no comparison between our position and the position of this fortunate residence of Rindavan, because they are actually relishing your presence and enjoying your association by dint of their activities. We may be proud of being controllers of the senses, but here the residents of Rindavan are so transcendental that they are not under our, our control. Actually, they are enjoying the senses through service to you. I shall therefore consider myself fortunate to be given the chance to take birth in this land of Rindavan in any of my future lives. My dear Lord, I am therefore no, not interested in either material opulences or, or liberation. I am most humbly praying at your Lord's feet for you to please give me any sort of birth within this Vrindavan forest, so that I may be able to be favored by the dust of the feet of some of the devotees of Vrindavan. Even if I am given the chance to grow just as a humble grass in this land, that will be a glorious birth for me. But if I am not so fortunate to take birth within the forest of Vrindavan, I beg to be allowed to take birth outside the immediate the immediate area of Rindown, so that they, when the devotees go out, they will walk over me. Even that would be a great fortune for me. 
I am just aspiring for a birth in which I will be smeared by the dust of the devotee's feet. I can see that everyone here is simply full of Krishna consciousness. They do not know anything but Mukunda. All the Vedas are indeed searching after the lotus feet of Krishna. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that the purpose of Vedic knowledge is to find Krishna. And it is said in the Brahma Samhita that it is very difficult to find Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by systematic reading, reading of the Vedic literature. But he is very easily uh, sorry, but he is very easily available through the mercy of a pure devotee. The pure devotees of Vrindavana are fortunate because they can see Mukunda, Lord Krishna, all the time. This word Mukunda can be understood in two ways. Muk means liberation. Lord Krishna can give liberation and therefore transcendental bliss. The word also refers to his smiling face, which is just like the kunda flower. Mukha also means face. <laughs> The kunda flower is very beautiful, and it appears to be smiling. So thus, the comparison is made. Rebel. Wow, I gotta look up that flower. Kunda flower. Haribo. The difference between the pure devotees of Vrindavan and other devotees is that the, the, that the residents of Vrindavan have no other desire but to be associated with Krishna. Krishna, being very kind to his devotees, fulfills their desire. Because they always want Krishna's association, the Lord is always prepared to give it to them. The devotees of Vrindavan are also spontaneous lovers. They do not follow the regulative principles. They are not required to strictly follow regulative principles because they are already naturally developed in transcendental love for Krishna. Regulative principles are required for persons who have not achieved the position of transcendental love. Brahma is also a devotee of the Lord, but he is subject to follow the regulative principles. He prays to Krishna to give him the chance to take birth in Vrindavan so that he may be elevated to the platform of spontaneous love. Hmm. So even Lord Brahma says that he is not. He needs to follow these regulative principles. And he. he yeah, he just, doesn't. Yeah, he just didn't artificially move to Vrindavan in his Brahma life, but he prayed that <laughs> in the future he. Imagine if Brahma was like, oh. Now I'm moving to Vrindavan. <laughs> he left all the things that went is not covered boys to play. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Brahma continued. My Lord, sometimes I'm puzzled as to how your Lordship will be able to repay in gratitude the devotional service of these residents of Vrindavan. Although I know that you are the supreme source of all benediction, I am puzzled to know how you will be able to repay all the service that you are receiving from these residents of Vrindavan. I think of how you are so kind, so magnanimous, that even Putana, who came to cheat you by your by you by dressing herself as a very affectionate mother, was awarded liberation and the actual post of a mother. And other demons belonging to the same family, such as Agasura and Bakasura, were also favored with liberation. Under the same circumstances, I am puzzled. These residents of Vrindavan have given you everything, their bodies, their minds, their love, their homes. Everything is being utilized for your purpose. So how will you be able to repay their debt? You have already given yourself to Putana. I surmise that you shall ever remain a de debtor to the residents of Vrindavan. Being unable to repay their loving service, my dear Lord, I can, my Lord, I can understand that the super excellent service of the residents of Vrindavan is due to their spontaneously engaging all, na all natural instincts in your service. It is said that attachment for material objects and home is due to illusion, which makes a living entity conditioned in the material world. But it is only the case for persons who are not in Krishna consciousness. In the case of the residents of Vrindavan, such obstructions as attachment to heart and home 
are non-existent because their attachment has been co converted unto you and their homes have been converted converted into a temple because you are always there and because they have forgotten everything for your sake, there is no impediment. For a Krishna conscious person, there is no such thing as impediments in heart and home, nor is there illusion. I can also understand that your appearance as a small cowherd boy, a child of the cowherd man, is not at all material activity. You are so much obliged obliged to their by their affection that you have you are here to enthuse them with more loving service by your transcendental presence. In Vrindavan, there is no distinction between material and spiritual because everything is dedicated to your loving service. My dear Lord, your Vrindavan pastimes are simply to enthuse your devotees. I am, if someone takes your Vrindavan pastimes to be material, he will be misled. My dear Lord Krishna, those who deride you claiming that you have a material body like an ordinary man are described in the Bhagavad Gita as demonic and less intelligent. You are always transcendental. The non-devotees are cheated because they consider you to be a material creation. Actually, you have, the, you have assumed this body, which resembles that of an ordinary cowherd boy, simply to increase the devotion and transcendental bliss of your devotees. My dear Lord, I have nothing to say about the people who advertise that they have already realized God or that by their realization they have themselves become God. But, but as far as I'm concerned, I admit frankly that for me it is not possible to realize you by my body, mind or speeches. What can I say about you or how, how can I realize you by my senses? I cannot even think of you perfectly with, with my mind, which is the master of the senses. Your qualities, your activities and your body cannot be conceived by any person within this material world. Only by your mercy can one understand to some extent what you are. My dear Lord, you are the supreme lords of all creation. Although I sometimes falsely think that I am the master of this universe, I may be master of this universe, but there are innumerable universes and there are innumerable Brahmas also who pre preside over these universes. But actually you are the master of, of them all. As the super soul in everyone's heart, you know everything. Please, therefore, accept me as your surrender servant. I hope that you will excuse me for disturbing you in your pastimes with your friends and calls. Now, if you will kindly allow me, I will immediately leave so you can enjoy your friends and calls without my presence. <laughs> Brahma was running away. <laughs> <laughs> you were My dear Lord Krishna, your very name suggests that you are all attractive. The attraction of the sun and the moon are all due to you. By the attraction of the sun, you are beautifying the very existence of the Yadu dynasty. With the attraction of the moon, you are enhancing the potency of the land, the demigods, the brahmanas, the cows and the oceans. Because of your supreme attraction, demons like Kamsa and... Demons like... Demons like Kamsa and others are annihilated. Therefore, it is my deliberate conclusion that you are the only worshipable deity within the creation. Accept my humble obeisances until the annihilation of this material world. As long as there is sunshine within this material world, kindly accept my humble obeisances. In this way, Brahma, the master of this universe, after offering humble and respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Person of Godhead and circumvable circumambulating him three times was ready to return to his abode known as Brahmaloka. By his gesture, the Supreme Person of Godhead gave him permission to return. As soon as Brahma left, Lord Sri Krishna, Krishna immediately appeared as he had on the very day the cows and cowherd boys had vanished. Hmm. Krishna had left his friends on the bank of the Yamuna while they were engaged in lunch. And although he returned exactly one year later, the cowherd boys thought that he had returned within a second. That is the way of Krishna's different energies and activities. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna himself is residing in everyone's heart and he causes both, he causes both remembrance and forgetfulness. All living entities are controlled by the supreme energy of the, of the Lord and sometimes they remember and sometimes they forget their constitutional position. His friend being controlled in such a way could not understand that for one whole year they were absent from the Yamuna bank and were under the spell of Brahma's illusion. When Krishna appeared before the boys, they thought, 
Krishna has returned within a minute. They began to laugh, thinking that Krishna was not willing to leave their lunchtime company. <laughs> they were very jubilant and invited him. Dear friend Krishna, you have come back so quickly. All right, we have not as yet begun our lunch, not even taken one morsel of food. So please come and join us and let us eat together. <laughs> yeah, they were one year there. Krishna smiled and accepted their invitation. And he began to enjoy the lunchtime company of his friends while eating. Krishna was thinking, These boys believe that I have come back within a second, but they do not know that for the last year I have been involved with the mystic activities of Lord Brahma. <laughs> that was actually kind of funny. Yes, sir. Just like this, we are also away from Vrindavan. And for us, many years pass, but in there, it's like second. <laughs> yeah, we have to go back. <laughs> so. mm. May I continue from here, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Mm. After finishing their lunch, Krishna and his friends uh, in calves began to return to her to their Rajabhumi homes. While passing, they enjoyed seeing the dead car uh, carcass of Agasur in the shape of a giant, uh, gigantic serpent. When Krishna returned home to Rajabhumi, uh, he was seen by all the inhabitants of Vrindavana. He was, he was wearing a peacock feather on his helmet, uh, which was also decorated with uh, of forest flowers, Krishna was also was also garlanded with flowers and painted with different kinds of miner uh, minerals collected um, from the caves of Govardhana Hill. Govardhana Hill was always famous for supplying natural uh, red dyes, and Krishna and his friends painted their bodies with them. Each of them had a a bugle made of buffalo horn and a stick and a flute and each uh, called to his re respective calves by their particular names. Uh, they were so proud of Krishna's uh, wonderful activities that while entering the village, they uh, they all sang his glories. All the gopis in Vrindavana saw that, saw uh, bugle. All the gopis in Vrindavana saw beautiful Krishna entering the village. The boys composed uh, nice songs describing how they were saved from this, uh, saved from being swallowed by the great serpent and how the serpent was killed. Some described Krishna as the son of uh, Yashoda and the others as the son of Nanda Maharaj. He is so wonderful that he saved us from the clutches of the great serpent and killed him. They said, but the um, but little did they know that once um, one year had passed since killing the killing Agasura. In this regard, Maharaj Pariksha and Sukadeva Goswami, uh, how the inhabitants. Oh, sorry. In this regard, Maharaj Pariksha asked um, Sukadeva Goswami how the inhabitants of Vrindavana suddenly developed. So much love for Krishna, although Krishna was not a, a member of any of their family, families. Maharaj Bhriksha inquired uh, during the absence of the original cowherd boys, when Krishna expanded on himself, why is it that the boys' parents became more loving towards him than the, their own sons? Why uh, Also, why did the cow, uh, cows became, become so loving towards the calves more than the, their own calves? So good day will go Swami told Maharaj Pariksit that every living entity is actually the most uh, most attached to its own self. Outward paraphernalia such as home, family, friends, country, society, wealth, opulences, reputation, etc., are all only secondary and pleasing on uh, sec secondary and pleasing the living entity. They please only because they bring pleasure to the self. For the re uh, for this reason, one is self-centered, and is attached to the body and the self and self more 
sorry, is attached to the body and self more than he is a, to the relative, like uh, wife, children, and friends. If if there are, if there is some immediate danger to one's own person, he first of all takes care of himself, uh, then others. This is natural, and that means more than anything else, he loves himself. Uh, he loves him, his own self. The the next important object of affection, hit, uh, after his own self is his material body. A person who has no information of the spirit soul is uh, is very much attached to his material body, uh, so much so much so that even in old age he wants to preserve the the body in so many artificial ways, thinking that his old body and broke uh, old old and broken body can be saved. Everyone is working hard day and night just to give pleasure to his own self under the uh, under either the bodily or spiritual concept of life. Where we are attached to 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 material possessions because they give pleasures to the senses or to the body. The attachment of the body is there only because I because the I, the spirit soul, is within the body. Similarly, when when one is further advanced, he knows that the spirit soul is pleasing because it is part part and parcel of Krishna. Ultimately, it is Krishna who is pleasing and all attractive. He is the super soul of everything. And in order to give us information, Krishna de descends and tell tells us that the all, all attractive center is he is he himself. Without without being an expansion of Krishna, nothing can be attractive. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever is it attractive within the cosmic manifestation is due to Krishna. Krishna is therefore the reservoir of all pleasure. The active principle of everything is Krishna. And highly elevated transcendentals see everything in connection with him. In the Chaitanya, Chaitanya Charitamrita is stated that in Mahabhagavata or a highly advanced devotee sees Krishna as the active principle in all movable and immovable living entities. Therefore, he sees everything within the cosmic manifestation and relates in relation to Krishna. For for the fortunate person who has taken shelter of Krishna as everything, liberation is already there. He has no uh, he is no longer in the material world. There's no, this is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, whoever is engaged in devotional service of Krishna is already in the uh, Brahmaputta or spiritual platform. The very uh, the very name Krishna suggests piety and liberation. Anyone who takes shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna enters the boat of for crossing the ocean of material need signs for him. Uh, for sorry, crossing over the ocean of material of knee signs. For him, this vast expansion of the material manifestation becomes as insignificant as a hoof print. Krishna is the center of all great souls. He is the shelter of the material worlds. For, for one who is in, on the platform of Krishna consciousness, Vaikuntha, or the spiritual world, is not, uh, it's not far away. He does not live within the material world uh, where there is danger at every step. In this way, Krishna consciousness was fully ex explained by Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami even recited to the king the statements and prayers of Lord Brahma. These descriptions of Lord Krishna's pastimes with his cowherd boys, uh, uh, his eating with them and on the bank of Yamuna, and Lord Brahma's prayer unto him, all transcendental subject matters. Anyone who hears, recites, or chants them surely gets uh, all his spiritual desires fulfilled. Thus, Krishna's childhood past, uh, childhood appearance, his his boarding in Balaram and Vrindavana was described. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 14th chapter of Krishna. Prayers offered by Lord Brahma to Lord Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. Haribo. Haribo, Haribo. 
ಚೇತೋ ದಾರ್ಪಣಮಾರ್ಜನ ಭವಮಹಾದಾವಾಗ್ನಿರ್ವಾಪನ ಶ್ರೇಯ ಕೈರವ ಚಂದ್ರಿಕಾ ವಿತರಣ ವಿದ್ಯಾಪಾದು ಜೀವನ ಆನಂದ ಬುಧಿವರ್ಧನ ಪ್ರತಿಪದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಮೃತಸ್ವಾದನ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮಸ್ನಪನ ಪರಂ ವಿಜಯತೆ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ತೃನಾದೀಚೇನಾರೋರಪಿ ಸಹಿಷ್ಣು ಅಮಾನೀನಾಮಾನೇನಾಕೀರ್ತನೀಯಸದಾಹರಿಂಕಿಂಕಣಿತಿ ನಯನ ಗಲದಶ್ರುಧಾರಯ ಪದನ ಗದ್ಗದೃದಯ ಗಿರಾಪುಲಕರ್ಚಿತ ಅಪೂ ಕದಾ ತವ ನಾಮ ಗೃಹನೆ ಭವಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಇಗಾಯಿತ ನಿಮಿಷೇನ ಚಕ್ಷುಷಾ ಪ್ರಾಶಾಯಿತ ಶೂನ್ಯಾಯಿತ ಜಗತ್ಸರ್ವ ಗೋವಿಂದ ವಿರಹೇ ನ ಮೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರುಶಿಲಾಪ್ರಪಾಕ್ತಿ